Okay, so there were more complications, right? It turns out that if you have somebody who has Broca's area entirely intact, there's no problem with Broca's area whatsoever, um, but Broca's area is cut off from prefrontal, premotor, supplementary motor areas, other areas of the frontal lobe. If you disconnect and isolate Broca's area, well, people have pretty significant um, language production problems. They can have spontaneous speech impairments. Um, they can still understand speech. They have, there's no problem with any of those posterior regions. The, there's no damage to Wernicke's or any or the angular gyrus or any of these other regions in more posterior areas of the left hemisphere. Um, but these individuals have, you know, a disconnection of a more extensive network in the frontal lobe, which suggests that there are more regions other than Broca's area that have to coordinate activity to generate, you know, what it is you're going to say or sign or write. So it's not just so localizationist is the term, like it's just Broca's area's production. It's Broca's in concert with a number of other regions actually in the frontal lobe. There is a more extensive kind of uh, more distributed sort of frontal lobe network for language production, right? So it's not just Broca's area. That was an important kind of understanding. These are called um, transcortical. But that means because you're cutting the connections across cortex in the frontal lobe, right? Motor, because they're going to deal with the production of speech or sign or writing. So they're going to be you know, impacting your ability to generate some kind of motor activity that can convey information right? Um, you know, across space to someone else. Um, and they're an aphasia, transcortical motor aphasias, uh, because you're having problems with this process. Um, and so this is, um, these are these other, this, this, this more distributed network in the frontal lobe that seems to underlie our ability to sort of plan and, you know, generate um, speech or sign or writing uh, is considered to be, you know, uh, uh, evidence for a more extensive distributed network you know, required for language production. So it's not just Broca's area. Um, it's actually, you know, multiple regions, you know, sort of outside. It actually was quite extraordinary. Uh, it was found that, you know, there are individuals who have damage to Broca's area, but it doesn't descend below the level of the cortex. It's, it's sort of just at the level of the cortex. And those individuals um, often don't really have any evidence of a specific Broca's aphasia. I mean, they, they can generate spontaneous speech and they don't have problems with preposition. So here you have actual damage <laughs> to Broca's area. And there are individuals that don't have a Broca's aphasia. So it, it's more than just Broca's. It's the connections that Broca's make is making, you know, potentially with these other regions in the frontal lobe. So transcortical motor aphasias are evidence that there's a more distributed, you know, frontal network for the production of speech uh, or sign or writing.